Hi, this is Digital Lady Sid, and today I'm going to present um, this new, it's not really a new filter, but it was new to me, this HSB HSL filter that Adobe lets you download for free. Um, they, they have to be, you have to go to a special site, and I have the links in my blog for you to download it, and if you're going to download it for Mac, you have to go to a different site, and CS6 have the same site, or for CS5 and CC, they use the same site. So that's all explained in my blog. All you need to do is to click into it, and it'll tell you where to go to download it. And uh, um, John Paul Caponegro's blog will tell you where to load it in, because he is the one who taught me how to do this. And it's um, very, very uh, easy to do and very good results. So here's the original image I have right here just to show you where we're going with this. This is Haw Creek in um, Florida and here is the result you get by uh, using this filter on it. So you can see that the colors and saturation are really good but look at the sky. It doesn't change at all or very very little. So that is the beauty of this. It just affects the colors that you want, want it affected. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off this group here. And the first thing that you're going to do once you've loaded this into uh, the plugins area, actually in uh, Photoshop, is you're going to duplicate. I duplicate this bottom layer. And you can either duplicate the whole image by going to image um, duplicate up here. Or in the case of what I'm going to do, since I have a group on here and I don't want to copy that, I'm going to go to Duplicate Layer, and I tell it that I want to um, go to, um, whoops, New, and say OK, and there's a new image right there. Now the next thing that we're going to do is once this is loaded, you go up to Filter, and you go down to Other, and you go into HSB HSL, and you can choose either HSB for the brightness or HSL for lightness, and you will get a little bit different results. It doesn't really matter which one you use. Um, just depends on which one you like, and if you don't like one, try the other one. But you do want to be left on RGB for the input mode. Say OK. OK, and now it turns this really ugly color and everything. Go over to your channels, and since the saturation is the green channel, hue is the red, and lightness or brightness is the blue if you want to alter those. But in this case, we're doing the saturation. Highlight the saturation green channel and duplicate it. Say duplicate channel. And just to remind yourself, just go ahead and go dash sat on it so that you know what it is and say, okay. Now we're done with that. So we go back over to the original image and we're back in layers now. Okay. Now, the first thing that you want to do here is you go up and go select, and you want to say load selection, and you can see in the untitled is the green sat there. It's, it's already listed for me because I don't have any other selection saved, so I say OK, and look at all the blinkies you get. Now, this is all the saturated areas of your image, the highly saturated areas of your image. So what you want to do is you go up here to Adjustments, and you, in my case, I usually choose the Hue Saturation, and I just click it, and now there is the mask, and all the light white areas are going to be the areas that are selected when you adjust your sliders in your Hue Saturation Adjustment layer. So let's go ahead and try that, and so in this case, I'm going to just increase the saturation a little bit. And I don't really want to adjust those particularly, but let's go into the reds and maybe adjust the reds a little bit more. Um, adjust my yellows a little bit. Let's see, yeah, see the yellows really make it pop some. Um, greens, let's see what we got with greens. Maybe we want to back those off. No, greens really don't show up there. Okay, we're gonna go into cyans, see what happens there. Not much because the sky is not one of the major saturated areas. Same thing with the blues, I believe. There's not going to be much difference there. Okay, and magentas. I don't think there'll be anything there. No. Okay, and let's go back up to the master 
and maybe we want to adjust that just a little more and maybe I do want to adjust the lightness just a little bit look how that pops that out just a little bit and I'm saying even the hue could be adjusted just a little there although I don't think so I don't like the hue change there Okay, so this is what you had to begin with, and that's what you're getting with your saturation adjusted. Now, you know, in this case, because I've got that selected still, I'm thinking, eh, let's just put maybe like a, a levels on there, and let's copy that mask over. So we hold down the Alt, and we just slide it up there, and I'll say replace mask, and you say yes. And now we can go into here, and watch what happens if we, we adjust this a little bit. You get a little more more interest uh, here in, in your whole image. Uh, there we go. Okay. Alright, and it's coming along real nice here. Now, what I did when I was playing with this, as you could, as you could see here again, here's the beginning, here we are now. The next thing that I did was I added a new layer, just a, a regular layer here, and I changed the blend mode to overlay, and I used a brush that I call my P Pre-Technic brush, and all it really is, is it's on airbrush and 9% um, uh, flow, and I set it to white, and I'm going to make it a spotlight effect, and watch what happens, it just pops, if I put just a little bit of this white on there, with this set it overlay, it will paint in some highlights for me, and that, that really, I think, makes the image a lot more striking so look I can make these little areas pop out just a little more in the in the um, tree area here where there's just not a lot of definition you can't really tell where the edges of things are and in this particular image uh, the Sun was pretty much straight up it was a little afternoon so you know the light is still pretty much on, on a lot of these things so look at the difference even that makes that to me makes a huge difference and you can adjust that down just a little bit if it's too much and then I added another one and I flipped it make it overlay use the same brush and I make it dark right behind the areas that I want to just show off a little more and it's just real subtle again because it's only a nine percent flow and once again you know I can make this forest area just kind of pop up here a little bit Give it a little more interest so that you can see it. I like the way the water looked. I just didn't really like the way the light was flowing on at all. So this is really almost like painting it in. And there you have it. That is, you know, exactly um, what I did before. So here's your original. Here it is with just the saturation added to it. A little bit of contrast with the levels and then a lighten and darken and you've got a really nice fall picture so that's it for this one um, if you um, want to see more of what I do please check out my blog at uh, my fun Photoshop blog at sidspix.wordpress.com and I'll have the link below for that my tidbits blog which is where I just usually just put up pictures and enjoy myself and that's digitalladysid.com and my website at sidjohnson.com Talk to you later. Thanks.